What's going on? My day to day people. Got my people with me, huh? Got my people with me. Once again, another blessed day, man. Another blessed day to serve the Lord, repent, bless the Lord. All right? How we bless the Lord, man, we keep talking about Him. We speak about Him. We speak about the Lord, man. We speak about the Lord. We seek the Lord. We seek Him, right? So listen, righteousness is just one of those things that you have to seek for. You have to continually seek for, right? It should get to a point in your life where you feel that you found righteous and you just stop. Like, oh, I found righteous. All right, I'm good. No, we continue to seek. We continue to grow. We continue to learn. Okay? We continue to move towards this path, man, that, that, that leads to the kingdom, man. We continue to do that. All right? It's a continual thing. So, what we're going to hit on is whenever people, like, something happens to you not saying you as a viewer but you know something happens and people just automatically want to oh god zap them get them take them away from here right scripture does say vengeance is mine i will repay saith the, saith the lord however if we're wrong if somebody does us wrong that doesn't mean that we have to just wish bad on them right have you ever considered that somebody may possibly be blind? So, the type of man that I am, I'm in my own lane. You know, I mind my own business, I'm in my own lane. So, if somebody happens to stumble into my lane and, and maybe provoke me or do whatever the case may be, like, I'm already thinking, okay, potentially could be blind. So, if you're blind, you, you don't know where you're going. You don't know or you do not see what you're bumping into. And also... This is why Ephesians 6, 12 says, wrestle not against flesh and blood. Wrestle not against flesh and blood. That goes for those that's in the body of Christ. Just because we're in the body of Christ doesn't mean that we're not going to go through here in life and not wrong somebody or not come across, um, you know, just wrong anybody. Nobody is perfect. We're all still flesh. We all still have this, this sinful flesh. So it's, it's, we're not perfect. All right. If we were perfect in the flesh, then flesh would have glory before the Lord. But we have to have glorified bodies. So if somebody stumbles into you, it's, it's probably because they're blind. And we have to understand that. So reroute your thoughts and not be quick to say, oh, Lord, take him out of here. Pray for him. Pray for her. Pray that salvation, that, that, that the Lord can, can seek them and, and, and they will open their hearts. To, to accept the Lord. Because Jesus is knocking on people's hearts, man. And, and I was there before when he was knocking on my heart, but I did not know it was him. I didn't know because I was carried away in my flesh. I was carried away being blind. And then the term that the world gives is being woke, right? So I was woke in a worldly sense, right? But once... We understand the small things. It's always the small things that get you. Think about a paper cut. How small a paper cut seems, but it hurts. It hurts the worst. You take a shower and it hurts. It, and it carries with you, but it's so small. So it's always the small things that we really have to take heed about when it comes to dealing with people. Okay? So you may have somebody flip you the bird. I don't know, try to run you off the road, cut you off in traffic. And just because we're walking in the spirit doesn't mean that we have to tell people we're walking in the spirit. They see it. They see it. They see it by how you react if somebody flipped you the bird. They see it by how you react if somebody cut you off. They see it. Okay? So try to have your life set up like this. To never let a day go by that you have not apologized to anybody. Okay? So if you have to apologize to somebody you know that you're in the wrong, apologize to them. We, we don't know. Life is a vapor. Life is a vapor. And the last thing I want to do is wrong somebody and I never apologize for it. And then I sleep and I have to question or be, you know, answer to the Lord. He's like, hey, what happened with this person? Think about it. So, 
this passage here that we're going to go over is perfect indication to why we should always pray for one another, even those that oppose us, even those that wrong us, okay? Pray for them. Forgive them. It's very imperative to forgive, all right? Very imperative. So we're going to start off in Luke chapter 9, verse 56. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. The Son of Man came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. All right? And this is, thank you. This is another correlation to, like, with sin. You know, you got murder. You got adultery. You got lying. You got all of these sins. Gossip. All of these sins, right? And people like to categorize them and say, well, at least I'm not a murderer, so I've done this. His sin is way worse than me. Sin is sin. It's a level, level playing field of what it is, right? It's all on the same line. Sin, 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 sin. All on the same line. It's not like a graph chart where you got murder going up to the top, and then it comes down, and it goes down to gossip, and then it goes up to gluttony, and then it goes back up. No, it's all level. So we have to get away from that and, and thinking of thinking, okay, you know what, just because I did this and, and, and they did that, my sin is less than yours. No, sin is sin. Period. Sin is sin. So let's go to Luke chapter 18. We're going to go verse 10 through 4. So two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. A publican is also like a tax collector. 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee. That I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And a publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eye into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this, man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased and he that humbles himself shall be exalted we have to live a low life get it low life right we have to live a low life to go to the path of the high life but it only starts with being low life on this earth so if you're a high life, high mighty, beating your chest, not like this brother here, but beating your chest in pride and not low, what's going to happen? The Lord's going to, he's going to chop you down, man. He's going to bring you to your knees. We've seen that with Nebuchadnezzar, right? So we're all considered trees of righteousness. And what he did with Nebuchadnezzar was he chopped the tree down, but he left a stump. You can still grow something off a stump, right? A stump can still produce something. So he didn't uproot it. There's a difference between uprooting and leaving something down to a stump. It's all in your heart, my siblings. It's all in your heart. We have to live this low life. What do you say? The meek shall inherit the earth. We all know what pride is. And we all know who the father of pride is. The father of pride is the devil himself. So be low. Live a low life. Who cares? Who cares? Be humble. Right? All right, so back. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's hit some good old Proverbs. As I said, we're going to be all in Proverbs. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. That's Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So those riches... Those riches is not a dollar bill. Those riches is not a gold chain. Those riches is not a pair of Jordan sneakers. Those riches are not things here on this earth. Those riches are what you are blessed with from the fear of the Lord. And what does the scripture say? By the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So those riches are found in wisdom. And then we see that wisdom is compared to like rubies. So we see that... that, that Anything that the Lord blesses you with spiritually, that's your riches. And then we are supposed to store that, right? 
We store that in heaven. We don't we don't store treasures on this earth. Because what it, what it say? A, a, a thief can come steal a dollar bill. A thief can come steal your Jordan shoes. A thief can come steal your car. A thief can run up in your house. Right? But a thief can't run inside of your house, which is spiritual. A thief can't steal your wisdom from you. A thief can't steal anything from you that God blessed you with that is spiritual. But anything that is of the flesh, it can be taken. And you can also rob yourself. All praises. Let's go to Proverbs 3, verses 34. Chapter 3, verses 34. Surely he scorns the scorners, but he gives grace unto the lowly, the low life. Act right, live low. Who cares? All right? At the end of the day, even if I came into this world with a twin, I do not have to answer my twin when it comes to judgment day. I have to answer the judge himself. So live a low life. Who cares? Who cares? Live a low life. Be humble. All right? Be humble. Let's go to Proverbs 11, chapter 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And a beautiful thing about wisdom is that you can't go around telling people that you're wise. We see that when we study scriptures. You can't say, oh, well, I'm a wise man. No. You can't be wise in your own conceits, as we're about to see that. Because when you're wise in your own conceits, you become foolish. Right? That's what I love about this word, man. Because studying this word, I promise you, studying this word and applying this word to your life, it gives you a whole outlook in your mind and with your eyes. This is what Christ came to open. Christ came to open your mind and your eyes. All right? Let's not sleepwalk out here. Let's not walk around and with our eyes open, but we don't see. All praises. Let's go to pride. No, I'm sorry. Let's go to, let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Right? And then you may question, what's a, what's a high man? What's a high man? A high man is one of those, you know, we heard this term before. Holier than thou. They feel they don't sin, right? We can't be a high man. We got to be low, remain low, okay? Because I promise you, Jesus did not walk this earth wanting to be recognized as who he was. Because if you remember, he charged Peter when Peter said, oh, you're the son of man, you're Jesus, you're, you're, you're the Messiah. He charged him and said, don't tell nobody that. Let's look at whenever Judas came and how did he recognize? How, how did he initiate the fact that who he was targeting was going to be Jesus? So the council knew who, who he was talking about. It's not like Jesus was sitting out there decked out in some robe and, and you could just walk up and point him out. and say, oh, yeah, there he is. No, he blended in. He was low. He was low. So Judas had to come and give him a kiss. Which indicated that. That's who Jesus was. So it was not him coming and saying, oh, there he is. It's an easy find. Remain low. And we're going to finish this out with Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. That's Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Listen, pay attention to the world and pay attention to this word. Which one is going to last? Which one is going to prevail? Which one makes sense? Okay? Because these dollar bills, this gold, whatever materialistic things here on earth, 
whatever value it has, it does not make sense. It's funny because you got to pay cents to buy it. But it don't make sense. What makes sense is this word. All right. Much love. Peace.